Here are the tools needed to replace the valves, seals, and other parts on the RSV pump. Here are the kits and their included parts. To replace the discharge valves on this pump, you need to remove the three valve caps located on the top of the manifold with a 17 mm hex socket. If the valve breaks apart, a reverse pliers can be used to take out the pieces. Remove the rest of the valves by grasping the plastic valve cage and pulling straight out. To install a new valve, Place the assembly squarely into the port and push straight down until the valve is seated. A 3-8 socket extension works best to seat them. Clean the valve caps and then torque them to 442 inch pounds. To remove the unloader assembly, use a 21 millimeter wrench. The seat is located underneath the unloader. You can use a 6mm bolt to remove it. Make sure to install the new seat in the same direction as the old one came out. Get a new seat and put it on the bolt in the same direction, then screw it in securely at the bottom of the port. Turn the adjusting handle counterclockwise to relieve the main spring tension. Then make sure the unloader bypass tip moves freely. Place the unloader assembly into the cylinder and screw into place by hand. Next, remove the chemical injector with a 19 mm socket. Replace the shutter and make sure that the tip is installed towards the pump. Make sure the shutter doesn't fall out when you put it back in, then hand tighten. Using a 5mm socket, remove the easy start located behind the unloader. Remove the retaining cap and replace the ball and spring. The ball must go in first, followed by the spring. Reinstall and tighten. To replace the seals or inlet valves, start by removing the eight manifold bolts using a five millimeter hex socket. This pump is small enough that you can lift off the manifold by hand. Using the reverse pliers, grasp the piston guide and twist out. Here is another type of reverse pliers. Twist side to side while using this one. Once the seals are removed, use the reverse pliers to remove the inlet valves in the same fashion as the discharge valves.
put the new ones in and use the same socket extension to seat them. The seals sit in the manifold starting with the plastic support ring with its flat side down. Then comes the high pressure seals, which you have to work in the edges at an angle. After the high pressure seals are installed, next is the backup ring, which goes in squarely into the port. Now, we are going to replace the low pressure seal, which is inside the rear piston guide. You will need to use a mechanics pick to take it out. Be extremely careful not to damage the inside of the guide with your pick. Make sure the open side of the seal is facing down within the guide. Squeeze the seal, insert into the guide gland and physically work into place. Put the O-ring on the rear piston guide and press it into the head with its flat side up. Use your pick or fingers to take off the dust guide O-rings on the pistons. Be extremely careful not to damage the ceramic coating on the pistons. Roll the new O-rings all the way to the back of the piston. To reinstall the head onto the drive end, rotate the crankshaft so the two outside plungers are extended equally. Place the head onto the plunger and tap the head on with a soft faced hammer. Install the head bolts and torque to 92 inch pounds using an alternating pattern to evenly distribute pressure.